Two Trees TT 5.5 laser. $200 laser. It's a cheap one. I did a assembly video on it and a little bit of a startup video. I've had a few days now to really put it through the tests. I'm going to show you what I found coming up. I'm Roger, welcome to the shop, and sitting here in front of me is the Two Trees TT 5.5, not the S, it's an adjustable focus. Got this on Amazon for $200. Wanted to see exactly what a $200 laser was like, what I could possibly use it for. And from my startup video and assembly video, you saw that it had a couple of issues, but at my thought at the time was if it's uh, you're just getting into laser and you've got a tight budget and this would be an entry level laser. Well, yes and no. I have found a few things and we're going to go over those here because I, I have found some really strange things. Of course, there was a cable management issue, but th that's not a big deal. A uh, little bit of discrepancies about the actual working area. Uh, they claimed it was... Uh, 390 by 320 millimeter it actually works better at 300 by 300 millimeter and I'll show you why here in a minute actually when you uh, have this in light burn and that light burn find your laser the, when it reads it from the controller it reads the, the work area as 300 by 300 so just something to keep in mind I did try to make a grid at the uh, 390 by 320 as you can see here but we had some failures here. It uh, was hanging up, it, was, it would stall, it would jump off the lines, and I finally aborted that and went to my uh, 300 by 300, which you see is engraving here. And I have this set up for coasters, tiles, and that type of thing. That's what I'm actually going to use this laser for. And I have made quite a few tiles here. And we're going to get into what I discovered there with the life of the laser head. Okay, one of the things I found when I was uh, trying to frame this to do a 390 by 320 when I first started out was it was hanging up and I mean it was hanging up bad and I couldn't really figure out what was going on till I started moving this a little bit more and I could feel that these wheels right here as it traveled on the extrusion, every once in a while they would hang and skid and that would kick the uh, gantry a little bit and it, then it would stall. And I couldn't really figure out what was going on, so I actually took one of these out and I, I don't have it laying here now, but as you would hold it and rotate it, it's a sealed bearing so it's not like you can lubricate it. It's sealed, it was like there was grit inside it and it would hang every once in a while and you'd have to kind of mess with it. So what I did was I took some uh, wheels off of a, uh, actually these came off of a 3D printer that was just for parts, and I re had to replace four out of the six. It's a quality control issue. When they, these were manufactured, uh, there was some kind of grit or something in there, and these would hang and it would prevent the uh, y-axis from traveling back and forth smooth. I haven't found any problems at all on the x-axis here. That all seems to work fine. But once I replaced these bearings, I was able to get this thing to frame properly. And I'm going to run it all the way back and we'll run the full perimeter of what they say is the working area here. So as you can see now, it, it travels fine, but it does not come all the way back to home. And I haven't quite figured out why. I can move this back about 10 millimeters. This is a problem if you're trying to work the entire area. I'll frame this again. So 
So there again it stalls about 10 millimeters short of where you started from. Now if I start this from center, I'll still have the same issue when it gets down here on the extreme. So let me get this centered. That's about center and I'm going to set the origin center. That's the center of a 300 millimeter grid but it'll be close. I'll frame this again. So you can see it came out short on the extreme of the Y. Stop short there. And then when it goes back to center, it's not in the center because it's stalled on those points. So that's something you got to keep in mind if you're trying to work to extremes. Now if I change this back to a 300 millimeter square. Okay, what I need to do here is get my center and I'm actually going to fire the laser at low power so I can get it right back in the center. There we're centered. I'll frame this. It's a 300 millimeter square. Center origin. So we'll see how close we are back to center. I'll fire the laser again and see it's about, oh, it's almost 10 millimeters off. That's something you're going to have to keep in mind if you're going to start going to extremes on this. If you're framing something smaller, and let me uh, pull open a tile here pattern, something I've been burning. Okay, I'm going to get this back to center again. You see we're right back on center. Now I'll frame this. This is for a four and a quarter inch square, which is what my uh, coast tile coasters are. So it'll frame that. And we are right back to center. Right where it should be. This time I'll frame it with the laser on. You can see that. So for, there's back to center again. So for small projects, that part works perfect. Okay, so my intentions of what I'm going to do with this laser is pretty much dedicated to making tiles. Um, I'm not going to use it for our wood signs or definitely not for cutting because it doesn't cut with a hoot. But it does work well for tiles. And what you see right here on the table, and uh, right here is where I did the initial first burn test when it was brand new. And after doing about 20 tiles, I noticed that the engravings were starting to get light, so I ran another burn test. Now we're here. So I, this batch I ran right here that you see, I just finished these up today, I decided to run another burn test because I noticed here on some of these, like here, some of the engraving was getting lighter. Now these were all coated at the same time. So it's not like there was a variation there. Here is the latest burn test today. So as you can see, the laser head is failing fairly fast. Uh, I'll, I'll put something better on it because this is a really cheap one, so to speak. But this is, uh, these owls here, I, I have an order for 24 of these and there's eight of them here. Uh, I, I do have the rest of them done, but I did run the whole batch on this laser and it did them all just fine, but as I got towards the end here, and these were today, I noticed that some of these, some of the engraving was starting to get light. That's why I ran this last test. Uh, one of the other ones that I did is this one over here with the uh, bees and the honeycomb. I did a set of eight of those. They all came out fine, but that I did those before I did these owls. So there's something to think about, and yes, I know they say don't run your laser at 100% power because it'll shorten the life of the laser head. 
you know, run it at 80% power, 50% power at a slower speed. Yes, I've heard that, and I've done that with, uh, for example, my Sane Smart. It just, yeah, the laser head does last longer, but you don't really get any more projects out of it because it takes longer to burn each project, and pretty soon they're all fading down to this lower level. Uh, when you get a good quality laser head, like on my Artura, my Atom Stack, or definitely my X-Tool D1, it's, it's a whole other story. I have not seen any degradation like I saw here. So there's something to keep in mind. You know, as I said, it's fine for an entry level, but for the longevity of the laser head, it's limited, and I still question whether that is really 5.5 watt output. I have no way to actually test that. Uh, I'll probably upgrade this to something with a fixed focus and change the uh, what they call the Z axis gantry on there so I'll be able to raise and lower it uh, with some type of adjustment. But something to think about. Okay, I also ran a, a few signs on here. Uh, we, we do a lot of wood engraved signs. Uh, this arrow you see up here, I did that for someone. They wanted that little over yonder arrow. I guess that's so people know where over yonder is. Then another one we do quite a bit of is this one here. It says welcome-ish. And this one at the bottom actually has a finish on it now. And I engraved these back to back using the same file. And this one, for some reason, the laser took off and engraved the line across it. So I can't use that one. Uh, the other thing that, this is where I found out it doesn't always come back to home on a larger format. As you see, this one here is perfectly centered. These are both set up the same on there. And this one is offset a little bit because the laser didn't come back to its origin point like it should have. So there's something you're going to have to check if you're doing multiples that it does come back to the point of origin every time. You're going to have to check that or you'll end up with something offset. And why I got this wild line in there I have no idea. It's not in the file. I have done more of these since on my other lasers using the same file and I don't have this wild line. I don't know where that came from or why it did it. So there's my thoughts on this Two Trees TT 5.5 $200 laser after some fairly rigorous testing on it. Did, uh, I did get quite a few of these tiles out of it. Uh, as I, you saw there, it did lose power. It, it does work well for engraving signs, like so. Uh, other than that one issue where I had that one line, and I still I have no explanation for that, where it came from or just one of those things, I guess. Okay, so what do I think of this overall after all this testing? If, as I said, if it's definitely entry level, it's not high quality, it does do the job. Uh, it might be for you if you like to tinker. The bearings, that was quality control issue from the factory in China. You know, somebody got a bad batch or maybe yours will be fine. I don't know. Another thing I noticed was the stepper motors on this laser, while they're the same size square, they're not as deep as the normal NEMA 17 stepper motors you see on other lasers or on 3D printers. Uh, they do work, but they're, of course they're not moving a whole lot of weight either because this uh, is extremely lightweight. This weighs very, very little. Uh, compared to uh, the Ortur or the Atom Stack, uh, this is about half the weight. Uh, I can't even compare it to the X-Tool because that one's really heavy. That's a good, nice, big, heavy-duty laser, but it's also 800 bucks. so something to think about there. Like I said, if you like to tinker and you're adept at it and you're mechanical, yeah, you could, you could do some things with this. Not a problem. You're definitely going to have to upgrade that laser head, though. I, I can see that that really cheap laser is just not going to last. But, so there's my thoughts on it. There's the tests on it of... I bought this, nobody's providing it. My opinions are mine. My the tests are proven, you know, how it works, what it does. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. I'm Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.